Today I want to talk about something that you've heard of, um, but I'm going to give you my particular take on it, and that's post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, I know a number of people who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder, but this is not it just for people who suffer from post-traumatic stress disorder at all. I remember seeing George Carlin, and he did a, a bit on post-traumatic stress disorder when it comes to the military and battles. And he talked about how it was originally called shell shock, and then it became battle fatigue, and then it became something else, and ultimately it became post-traumatic stress disorder. And his commentary, of course, Carlin always has that kind of point of view, is that the further we get away from something, the longer we talk about it, the more technical we talk about it, the more we make it sound technical, therefore unapproachable, and the more we disassociate that shell shock is actually a lot more descriptive than post-traumatic stress disorder. And actually shell shock, I think, was the second thing that came after post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh, excuse me, after uh, battle fatigue. I think it was originally called battle fatigue. So there are many of us walking around with post-traumatic stress disorder. Now, why would I say that? I was never in the military. Well, I was a severely emotionally and verbally and physically abused child. And I never thought of it that way until a guy named Greg Bear wrote a book called Surviving Childhood and Post-Traumatic Stress Disorder. And I went, wow. And I started reading that. And I realized that a lot of the characteristics of a person with PTSD I have as well. Um, I tend to be jumpy. If, if, if I'm asleep on a couch, you do not wake me up. You stand over on the other side of the room and call my name because I'll flail. <laughs> it's not like I'm trying to hit somebody. It's just that I go, wah, like this. I mean, when I wake up, it's a big thing. So that's just one of the examples. I've got a, I've got a lot of them, unfortunately. What occurred to me, though, is that a lot of people have PTSD. There are a lot of great treatments now for people with PTSD. All of a sudden, Teddy's standing up, and I'm wondering what's going on. That's not like him. Normally, he just lies there while I'm doing the jump start. Teddy, sit, buddy. Are you going to come back around here? Okay. Anyway, there are a lot of people out there with post-traumatic stress disorder. My sister Shonda has a uh, two massage therapy and float centers in Kansas City. And people who do floats or sensory deprivation tanks, they're very good for people with PTSD because it's amazing how much uh, doing something like that will relax you. Meditation, very good for PTSD. Journaling, very good for PTSD. Therapy, very good for PTSD. Now this is post, think about it, post-traumatic stress dis. Order. I want to talk to you today about what I call post-traumatic growth order. <laughs> after a trauma, so many things happen. After a breakup, after the loss of a child or a parent or a relationship or a situation, after something knocks us down, it can traumatize us, especially if we are being uh, abused or if we are going sustaining suffering through a long period of time. It scratches our record. That's the term I like to use. I'm old enough to remember records. I'm sure many of you are as well. We've got a, sounds like a police car about to go by. Many of us are old enough to remember that. And post-traumatic stress disorder scratches your record. If you are in a battle or if you see some horrible, horrific things, it scratches your mind and it makes it hard for it to go away. If someone breaks up with you, like I said, or if you break up with someone else and you're going through the pain and the suffering, or you lose something or someone, or if you have a pet die or whatever, all of those things are very, very stressful. Now, many of those are things you just have to live through. You just have to get through. Many of those are things that if you just go through the pain and the stages of grief, then you'll be okay on the other side. 
However, I also want you to look at the things that go wrong in your life that are ultimately within your wheelhouse. In other words, once you get to be an adult, there's not a whole heck of a lot that's not ultimately your responsibility or cannot be impacted by you by changing who you are. That's why I like to call this post-traumatic growth order. Sunshine. Oh, yeah. The sun's behind the clouds. Whoa, that's still too bright. Post-traumatic growth order. There is an order to life. Life is about growth. Life is often about breaking down and then coming back. I bought this beautiful flower arrangement to go on my um, kitchen table. And it's got all these uh, budding flowers. And one of the things that I've discovered is that you've got to do a couple of things with those flowers. You've got to deadhead them. You've got to pop off the dead ones so that the new ones can come out. And once a situation is over, you need to pop off what happened. You need to let go of what happened. But you need to look at what you could have done differently and what you can do differently growing forward. Yes, I said growing forward. You want to keep moving. Post-traumatic growth order. Begin to dive in. I, I mentioned this the other day. Two people are in a relationship. They break up. They're fighting, let's say. They're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting, they're fighting. They break up. One of these people looks back at the relationship and goes, that woman was an idiot. She was the problem. If only she would have been different, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If only she would have changed. If only, if only her, 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 right? Now then the other person goes, what could I have done differently? What could I have caught earlier? Maybe I need to read a book on this particular aspect of relationships. It's so interesting because I've read so many books on relationships, and I really think that there's probably a book out there, you know, like how to have a relationship with left-handed uh, dachshund raisers and <laughs> breeders. I mean, there are just so many specifics. So growth order means to look for something that's going to help you improve which makes you better in the future. Remember I talked about this book called Unhin um, not Unhinged, called um, Unfragile or Antifragile, that's it. Antifragile takes the concept of so things are fragile, they break, or things are robust, they don't break. Things that are antifragile, when they break, they build themselves back better. So again, to use the analogy of the T-1000 in Terminator 2, the liquid metal Terminator, he would melt and then he would come back together, but he would come back together as he was. The idea behind being anti-fragile, the idea behind post-traumatic growth order is to not come back as you were. It's to come back better because that's the only way to improve your level of protection and safety in your life. The better you become, the better life becomes. The less you become triggered, the less life seeks, seeks to trigger you. The more loving you become, the more love you find. It's all about learning to grow through whatever we're going through and to do it consciously. To do it consciously. I tell you what, I've been talking to a therapist for most of my life, and I sort of got out of it for the last I don't know, year, but since the breakup, back into it. Because I look at a therapist as, not as somebody who's going to fix me. I never do. And you shouldn't either. You shouldn't look as a, at a therapist. You shouldn't go in and say, here I am, fix me. You should be just like you're going to see a doctor. If you've got a physical problem, you should be reading books on that physical problem and going in and having a conversation with your doctor rather than asking your doctor to fix you. It's a whole different level when you sit down with the therapist and say, I'm reading a book about blank and I notice blank about my behavior 
in these situations and I want to address the core issues. Then the therapist goes, we got a player here. I mean, if you're spending 100, 110 bucks, 75, even if it's 20 bucks an hour, you want to get as much out of it as you can. And the way you do that is you become an active participant. I'm trying to think of his name. He wrote, love, oh, Bernie Siegel wrote Love, Medicine, and Miracles. He was a Boston oncologist. This man was a cancer surgeon. And he realized that he could do more for people by talking to them and loving them in between visits than he could through surgery, radiation, etc. And he talks about how when we're in the middle of a painful situation, often if we address that core wound, then the painful situation itself heals. He tells a story about a woman who uh, had this big tumor on her, I forget where it was, neck or breast or something like that. Anyway, she came in for surgery and he ended up having her draw cartoon uh, pictures with, with, uh, with crayons and talking and everything. And then he told her to go home and he said, before the surgery, I need you to spend two weeks forgiving yourself. And during that time, the tumor melted like butter. So when a situation happens, we have a choice. We can either look back and blame and point fingers and never get anywhere. And that's what people with narcissistic personality disorder have do, by the way. They really can never accept personal responsibility, but you and I can. You and I can see what we did to contribute to this, and we can look to try and make things better. And that's what life is all about. So today, I want you to think about some of the trauma that you've experienced. We all have. And ask yourself, how have you grown through it? And if you haven't, it's okay. Be honest with yourself. That's step number one. Be honest with yourself. And then, start growing. Pick up a book. Talk to an expert. This one book that I read, that I'm reading right now, that's really having an impact for me, first thing I did was contact the author. There's a lot of people who find my book and reach out to me. That's kind of a, that to me always shows that a person is super committed to what it is that I'm offering. So listen, you can allow things to, that happen to you to define you, or you can allow them to refine you. You can allow them to make you more. Practice post-traumatic growth order. Right? And since I said post-traumatic growth order, it's time for you to click share. Thanks everybody for all of you who click share every single day. That's how we're building this community of jump starters, positive people all over the world who jumpstart their day in a positive way. By the way, we are bringing these t-shirts back. I'll let you know when we have them available. Everybody, thanks so much for joining me today. Click share right now and type share in the comment box. Thanks so much, everybody. We'll see you again. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high, creating a complaint-free world. No more, no more complaining people. Their lives are changing. We're flying high.